Hi, I'm Callum from Time Valley Motorhomes, and today I'll be doing the handover on the Eldest Majestic 140. So coming down the driver's side of the vehicle, the first, the first thing you're going to get to is your cassette. So your toilet's behind here, so you make sure the slide's closed on the bowl of the toilet, you'll be able to lift this hand and pull the cassette out. You've then got some wheels to drag it around the site instead of carrying it when it's full and you would take it to your waste disposal point which is normally behind or beside your toilet block. Loosen the cap off, press the button and empty. Once you've emptied, put some water in, give the slosh around and empty again. And then if you're using the liquid in the the chemical in the liquid form, you do a cap full straight into here and pop it back into the vehicle. If you're using the tablets, you put a pint of water back into the cassette, push it back into the vehicle and drop a tablet straight down the toilet which will break up into the liquid. These lockers all open by the round headed key, so you can pop, pop that in. The west alloy, sorry, the square key. And underneath you do have your waste water, so this is any water you've put down a plug hole goes into a holding tank and you simply open this on the way out of your site over a grid and dump your waste water. Moving further down the vehicle you've got your external TV point so you can hook up if you're on a super site and they've got a TV aerial and you get a length of coax hook the vehicle up to the site and you can use their aerial should you be struggling to get a signal. And then this is where you'd fill your fresh water up so again this locks with a round headed key you take it off, go and buy yourself a hose pipe with some hose pipe connections, put a hose pipe in there until it overflows open until you're happy you've got enough water on board, which you can see on the main control panel. If you're a wild camper, you will have to take enough water with you. If you're going to a site, take a maximum of 20 litres. And below you do have your drain, so you filled up there, you've got too much water on board or you're winterising, it's open and this is just fresh water drained. Above is your battery locker, so you open this up and this is where you'll find your leisure battery and your hookup point. So to hook the vehicle up, you get your hookup lead, lift the collar and hook it on to the hookup point. Put the wire through the groove and then you can lock this locker, seal it tight, like so. Coming further back, this cover must come off when heating your water on gas. So your boiler's behind there, when heating your water on gas this cover must come off so you push some pressure on and peel it off. And it allows the fumes out from heating the water on gas. On the back panel of the motorhome you've got your high level brake light, your window and you've got your parking sensors which are your black sensors. Coming further around, this used to be a gas slugger, but now it's, this vehicle has been fitted with a LPG tank under slung. So you've got your LPG tank isolation valve in here and some storage for your hooker blade and your leveling ramps. You've got your Fiamma awning on the top. This is where you fill your LPG system from, so your tank. You go to your local filling station, put your connector on, Turn it so it goes opposite to the brass threads, lift the handle and fill until simply it won't take no more and then that is when it is you know it's full. Covers are on there for your fridge then so these are your winter covers on there at the moment they'll come off and you've got your security handle which can go over the door and can help you in and out the vehicle. And then at the passenger door you do have your diesel filler so you'd open it with the main ignition key. And you can fill with diesel. And if you open the door you've got your tyre pressures on the slam panel. So you've got 5 bar on the front, 5.5 bar on the back which is 72.3 on the front and 79.5 on the rear. And your tool kits underneath the passenger seat with a jack and a brace in and a torn eye. So anything you need to change your wheel. And located underneath this cover is where you'll find your engine battery, so should you ever need to change it, you'd have to get it out through the cab floor. But you do have your bonnet release on the side of the passenger dashboard. So coming underneath the bonnet, 
On this side, you've got your earth for your black jump lead. And if you lift this cover with a plus on, this is where your red positive jump lead would go for giving or receiving a jump start. You've got your weight plate here. So it's 3.3 .3 ton, this vehicle. It's got its mass and running order. So it tells you your payload between the two. You've got your pain cord. You've got your oil filler and your oil dipstick down here. And then you've got your various liquids, so you've got your, your brake fluid, your power, ste your power steering fluid, your coolant and your screen wash here. So once you get in the vehicle, this is the main 12 volt control panel. So this, you leave, if you're hooked up you'll have 240 volt, if you're not you will just have 12 volt. So you've got your master switch here. So you turn on and then you choose which battery you want to run off. You always want to run off the auxiliary battery which is your leisure and never the engine battery. So you'd press up for auxiliary. On here it's telling you your voltage of your leisure battery but if you press water it'll also tell you your water level. So we've got a full tank of water on board. You've got your master switch for all your lights which are then all individually switched around the vehicle. You've got your pump which you must have on. You use your kitchen tap, your hand basin tap, your toilet and your shower. And then you've got your awning, which is your awning light, which is located outside the vehicle. You also have on this side your electric step. So this will automatically retract when the engine started. But then you can put it in and put it out. Like so. And to lock the door, simply shut the door, push the catch down, and then as soon as you go for the lever, it will push back up. Come around into your kitchen, you've got your microwave here. So to use your microwave, you can just press the time and then stop and in here you put your main fuse square for your microwave so you can turn it on and off but this is only when hooked up your microwave will work below you've got your gas so use your gas make sure your tank is switched on and then you can light it you've got three gas rings and one electric on mains 240 which will indicate with the red light when it's on. Allow it to cool before you put the glass lid down because you may shatter the glass when it's hot. And below you've got your, your grill. And you've got your oven as well. Take your oven shelf and grill pan out when travelling as these can cause some noise when on the road. And underneath you put your gas taps. These are mainly for when the vehicle is habitation serviced, but your gas taps are down there if you need to isolate any appliance. And to operate your Dometic fridge, you've got three ways here. So you've got off at the top. You've got the plug, which is mains electric on hook up. You've got the battery, which is only when traveling, the engine will send a feed to the fridge just to keep it at the same temperature it was at when departing. So if you're lucky enough to keep this at home or you've got to hook up at a storage yard, hook it up the day before, put your shopping in, allow it to get cool, and then you can put on a battery and as soon as the engine started, it will maintain the temperature. Or you've got gas and you go down to the gas flame if you're well coming and you weren't hooked up. This is your temperature, but you'll also push that in, push the sparker, and then you can see the orange band go into the green. Once it goes into the green, it is lit. Like so. So if you haven't used the vehicle for a long time, it may, it's always best to bring the gas through on the hob first, and then your appliance will slowly start to light. Also when winterizing, if you do if you clean your fridge out, but then you don't want to shut your door because you're trapping the air in, if you just press here and pull the catch out, it will allow the door to not 
shut fully and allow ventilation in and out to stop any s smells and mold growing in the fridge. And then opposite you do have your wardrobe, so you've got your TV aerial here, so you'd loosen it off. If you are struggling to find a signal, push it up and then use the toggle on the bottom to direct the aerial. But when travelling, always pull the aerial down and tighten up. On the back, you've got your Vision Plus booster and then your TV aerial amplifier. So you can boost the signal should it be too strong or too weak. Just turn this little wheel at the back. And this is your wardrobe. Above you've got your My Wi-Fi system which is a Hawaii and you turn it on here so turn the switch on and then turn the actual device on be able to turn it on so press and hold it will come on It's always best that you do, this will only have a pay as you go simming or might not even have a simming at all with it being a used vehicle. So I would recommend getting a pay as you go sim from your phone provider or pay monthly sim and then whenever you go away you've got unlimited data. So you press and hold to turn on once it starts charging, low battery. But then to connect to it, if you take the back off, you'll get your pin. If you just peel the back off the device, <coughs> this is your pin here, your Wi Fi key ending 385. If you pair that into your phone when connecting, and the SIM card will go in here. So it hasn't got a SIM in at all, so you'd have to get a SIM card for the Wi Fi system to work. In your washroom, so make sure the pump's on, you'll be able to press it, hold, and this is the flush. And then like I was saying outside, this is your blade on the bottom of your toilet, so it must be close to get the cassette out, and then you can slide it to the right to deposit your waste into the cassette. When using it, always use it with the cassette blade open, and then flush and close, and then the diagram on the back will go red when it indicates that the cassette needs changing. Put toilet recovered, toilet holder, and then if you this is your shower screen, so pin this back with a turnbuckle when traveling, and then this will just cover the toilet when you are showering. And when winterizing as well, if you take your shower head off and allow the holes to lie in the bottom and leave all your mixer taps, kitchen tap, and shower sink open to stop any water from building up in the pipe. Above, you do have. The skylight to pinch and push up or you can push one side down or one side up depending on which way the wind's blowing and you do have a blackout blind on there as well. Your light switch for your washroom. And you also have your pull out sink so Pull it out here, and then you put your mixer down and open the door. And then you put your sink plug. Your light switch for the bathroom is located in the kitchen, just above the three pins socket. So there's your light switch for the bathroom. Coming into your rear shaped lounge, so the first thing you've got is your Avtex TV. And then you've got your heating controls as well. So you've got your space heater. So this is what source you want to be running off. So at the bottom you've got gas. Then you've got the fan just to recirculate the air off in the middle. And then you've got one wiggly line, which is one kilowatt of electric. Two wiggly lines, which is two kilowatts of electric, and three, which is three kilowatts. You can use two and three in this country, but you may be asked to use one 
on small SEL site abroad and then you've got your room temperature but to reset this if this ever failed to reset it you just rock between a couple of sources to reset the space heater you've also got your regulator above which shows that both batteries flashing green are fully charged and then you've got your Truma switches which are your ultra store so you've got ultra store on 240 mains electric which is one kilowatt off in the middle and two kilowatts and then the one closer to the wall is your ultra store on mains on gas so you've got 50 off in the middle and then 70 degrees so 70 degrees would will be what you use to wash your dishes and 50 which you'll use to have a shower you've got your plug 12 volt and a coax lead for your TV and then you've got your solar panel which I've already been through and all your little lights, your reading lights are individually switched and you use the cupboards on this instead of pulling the door if you push the catch in first and then pull the door on the eldest above you've got your skylight so again using the catches and you'll be able to push it up you can pull this bar and push it into here if you want a breeze and lock the bar in but when traveling make sure the skylight is fully closed along with all the windows and then you do have a fly screen and a blackout blind which you click together and then you can pinch them and separate them your windows you would just open the toggles off push out and use the black knob to keep the window out but again they must be closed when you travel and you do have a blackout blind and a fly screen on there and you do have curtains as well underneath this stool is where you'll find your trips and your 12 volt fuses for the vehicle so if anything trips the vehicle out try here or if any 12 volt appliance isn't working you can replenish the fuse so carry some just to be safe and you put your speaker for your reversing sensors in the back corner is where you'll find your <coughs> boiler so if you just lift cover up you've got your boiler in the back here so your winter tap is just down here so it's the little yellow tap here when it's lying down like it is now it's holding water you need to stand it up like so and it will drain the 10 litres of water out the Truma boiler directly out underneath the van it's very important that you drain the vehicle down in the winter because this is very expensive to repair or replace and it isn't covered under warranty so drain the boiler down open your fresh open your waste outside and then leave all your taps open in the middle position to make your bed at the rear there's a turnbuckle here so you loosen that pull this out pull this all the way it will get the two stoppers if you lift this board and pull it further back and then use the back rests you would remove that cushion here the back so this will lift out and then you would use both backrests upside down in the middle position. Like so, to make your double bed across the vehicle. So in your cab now, your handbrake is to your right. And you'll also see in the little cubby hole here your gas level indicator so this is what's in the tank so there's just over a half a tank of gas on board you've got your headlight adjustment your trip computer on the door you do have your window and mirror adjuster there so you've got your electric mirrors and your electric windows you've got your lights and your indicators on the stalk at the top and below you do have your cruise control this is fitted with a six speed manual gearbox and they're going to reverse you'd lift the collar and lift it up and you'll hear the beep that's just your sensors kicking in to lock the doors on an evening little padlock press that that'll lock the two cab 
doors, you've got your hazards, you've got your fog lights and you have your heated mirrors. The temperature controls are here with aircon in the middle. Must be on fan speed one or more for aircon to work. And then you do have your radio. So it's just an FM which you can search for your channels and press 1 to 6 to save. And in here you've got a USB in the, just in the top for connecting a phone to the head unit.